I've discussed this before in past videos, but I wanted to talk about it again because it is so important for anybody that's suffering from a chronic illness and needs a miracle in their life, needs something to give them hope still to keep going, that belief and faith that it can actually occur and it can actually be healed by God through a miracle. I want to make this video to let you know you absolutely can be against whatever odds God is bigger than anything, anything. It's miraculous. It's amazing. I, I have the new nickname, uh, Miracle Man, because what happened to me? And I want to share this story again with people just so they're to increase faith, hopefully, to build you up and to let you know that it can happen. Don't give up, okay? So let me let me kind of run down my story real quick. It was about 15, 16 years ago. I took an antibiotic called Leviquin. It's similar to Cipro. And I was severely injured by it. It, it destroys... Well, it caused a lot of problems. Let me kind of leave it at that. I don't know a whole lot of what happened to me. But basically, after this medication had did what it did to me, I was bedridden the first two years, completely bedridden, um, aside from crawling to the bathroom and not wanting to be taken care of. I was in horrible shape, in excruciating pain 24-7. It wasn't the kind of pain where if you move it hurts like after you've worked out. This was just a constant excruciating pain through my whole body with nerve, like peripheral neuropathy. So it was bad news. I had joint pain. I could hardly walk. I could hardly stand. I had horrible anxiety. I had blinding headaches, light sensitivity, racing heart. Felt like I was in fight or flight constantly. I was like bad shape, bad shape, <laughs> that kind of bad shape. And, you know, for, like I said, the first two years I was in bed. And then from there, I was slowly coming out of it. I mean, I, it was so, it was such a bad situation. I wasn't able to work. I was a writer at the time, lost everything completely, lost my job, which was writing from home, freelance writer, and all the businesses that I had built around that. Um, eventually I lost my wife. She left because of the illness. I was un unable to work and it just kind of tore us apart. I lost, you know, the car, the house, everything. Very sick. And this lasted for like 15 years to where I was sick. But I think that everybody that is in that kind of situation has one of two choices when it comes to God. And that is to either continue on and continue using that pain to draw closer to God. Or some of us fall away. Some of us get hopeless. Some of us feel like God's not listening or will never listen. And I can understand that because I felt like that a lot of the time when I would pray and I would, I would ask others to pray for my healing. And, you know, it's very easy to start giving up hope. So these 15 years went by and through it all, I was drawing closer to God slowly. I wish it didn't take me so long. I wish it didn't take me so long to listen to what the pain was telling me. I was so wrapped up in the pain and this anxiety and the way I was feeling and watching my world crumble around me that I wasn't clinging to God like I should be. And it's very easy, it's very easy to start to doubt. But as you read scripture, you know God is a God of big miracles. He can do some really amazing things. So why would, you know, why would my healing be out of that realm? And when you look at Jesus and his ministry and what he did, telling others to heal, he was healing people. He was that was a big part of his ministry, you know, where he would heal people. So I never lost sight of that, but I do believe at points I was feeling a lot of doubt because of that. So I did start to draw closer about two years ago. And as I was drawing closer, I was running into a lot of people that would pray over me. I had people anoint me with oil. I had people pray over me. And every time I went in thinking this is going to be it, this is going to be it. And I would walk out feeling exactly the same way I had as I walked in. And it was very disappointing. Talk about getting your heart broken over and over again with these high expectations and just nothing. So there was a lot of points where I felt like God wasn't there for me. I felt that I was, he wasn't listening. And 
I had actually resigned myself to the idea that God was keeping me that way for a reason, that he was keeping me like that because I need to learn something or I'd be more effective for him or whatever it may be. So as these two years progressed where I was drawing closer to God, these people would pray over me and it didn't mean much. Not, not to say though that I stopped praying because every day, every day and, and several times a day when you're dealing with something like chronic illness, Every day, there's a constant reminder about it, and you're constantly asking for God to help you because that's all you can do. You, you're powerless. Doctors couldn't figure out. I was getting diagnosed as fibromyalgia. I was getting diagnosed with possible lupus. I was getting diagnosed, you know, all kinds of things they thought that I might have. Lyme's disease, um, all kinds of different things. They were just saying it might be this, it might be this, because none of the doctors actually believed that Leviquin could cause this problem, an antibiotic. So... It's now come out that it can. It's actually, but still doctors don't know about it. So I was labeled crazy or why don't you just get up and, and get going? Like get back to work, do what you need to do. Uh, I'm in crippling pain. I'm sorry, I can't. It, it, was, it was, you know, it was so hard to sit there and be sick and to hear people telling you that it's in your head or blah, 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 because I looked healthy and there was no, there was no doctors backing it up. You know, they called it fibromyalgia. And I said, I don't think it's fibromyalgia. I don't exactly know what fibromyalgia is completely, but I have a lot of the symptoms as far as chronic pain. I had, I had, uh, you know, chronic fatigue, chronic pain. So it was, it was a mess, but I didn't give up hope. And as I was going through this, what I did was I kept drawing closer to God through it. It kept drawing me in. So as I'm drawing closer to God, I'm starting to go like, God can do this. Like, I was having a conversation with my son and I had brought, you know, we were talking about healing and mind over matter and, and the power of positive thinking, blah, 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 which I don't agree with. I believe it is through God that we are, we, we are given all things. But I started to, you know, I was telling him, I'm like, maybe it's, maybe I'm not being healed because it's like Peter when he was walking on the water and he was going to Jesus, and as he doubted was when he started to sink. So it's like, maybe I'm doubting. Maybe I don't have this 100% faith in me that God can and will heal me. So that's what I started working on. I started working on the mind of having full belief in the heart, just saying, I believe God. I believe you will do this when the time is ready. And I started to get very serious about believing he will heal me when it is his will and his timing, his perfect timing. And I started to truly believe that that was going to happen. So I was going along in life, still not healed, but still having faith and just thinking it was going to be something where one day I would see maybe a miracle, you know, light in the sky or, you know, Jesus in my room. But um, I thought it would be something really special when I would be healed because this was such a devastating illness. But it didn't happen like that. The miracle didn't come like that. It came really unexpected. Like uh, like they say with Jesus coming, you know, return, that he'll come like a thief in the night. Like we don't, I didn't see this coming. And you're healing, you're healing miracle. You might not see it coming, but that doesn't mean it's not coming. That doesn't mean God's not listening. People would petition God for a long time sometimes before he would actually respond to prayer. So what happened was I was sick. I went to church. I was going to church regularly. Had some great brothers that I hang out with that I'd go to church with often. And a woman who I'd seen there a few times, an older woman, walked up to me and just said, "I, God came to me and says he has big plans for you. I said, wow, he had just told me the same. <laughs> and uh, she asked if I would go to this thing called a men's encounter, which is going to be camping, kind of in the woods, in a, in a cabin, glamping. And it was going to be strenuous, which was hard for me even at that point, even 15 years out, it was a hard, I had a hard time. I was constantly having to think, how am I going to manage my pain and how am I going to have the energy to get through a day? So she asked if I would go to this for two days and I'm thinking, I don't know that I can do this. I don't know that I have it in me. I don't want to be wrapped up in bed out there, which would happen to me. I would, I would exert myself one day and be able to do a little something and I would be crippled in bed for two or three days, four days, five days. So I was very hesitant. As she asked me to go, I felt convicted by the Holy Spirit to go. But at the same time, I told her, look, I have a, an illness. I said, I can't. I, do, I don't know. Let me give it some thought. Even though the 
Holy Spirit's going, you better go. You need to go. So once I told her that, what she did was she placed her hand on my head and she started praying. And she started specifically praying for the things that were wrong with me. I hadn't told her that I had nerve damage and, you know, joints and muscle pain and blah, blah, blah. I didn't go through the rundown, but she was praying for that in specific. And I believe that God used her as a tool to deliver his healing. I don't believe she was the special person or anything like you need to seek out some special person. I believe it was her, God using her as a tool. And then again, I also believe it was my strong belief that God would heal me in his perfect timing, but I wasn't expecting it. That's the crazy part. So she prayed over me. I thanked her. We hugged, you know, a new friend, and I was going to let her know about the encounter. Well, after church, I'm usually pretty sore. Like that was, that would do me. And just sitting, I would stand through the worship, which was hard for me, the three songs, which is what, 10 minutes. Um, then sitting in the chair would be hard because of my pain. And then we'd walk down a hill to get to the car. It was a big church. So when I left the church, I remember thinking, hmm, I don't have any pain. I didn't connect the dots yet. I just thought, I don't have any pain yet. So usually what we would do is we would go to lunch. And so we went to lunch and that's usually where my condition would worsen. I would, I would feel more pain. I would be drained. I would just not be clear at all wrapped up in, in pain as, as anybody with chronic pain can understand. But I noticed that at, during and after lunch, I'm like, I'm still not in pain. And I still didn't connect the dots. It was still unexpected. I just said, I am having an amazing day today as far as my illness, this this thing going on. So went home, continued on my day, felt really good, did not have an ounce of pain, just felt amazing. And there was a book that was sitting on my nightstand and had been sitting there for close to about a year. And I'd only been able to read like a quarter of that book because I don't know if it was my mind was messed up from this antibiotic or if it was just from the constant nudging of the pain that I wasn't able to focus, but I had a hard time reading and understanding what I was reading and comprehending. I used to be an ace at that, not to, not to brag, but I used to, I used to have really good reading comprehension. I was a writer as well. So I, I, you know, I had a joy for writing and reading, but I couldn't read. I had a hard time reading and understanding. And that night I picked up a book, that book that had been sitting on my nightstand. I started to read it. And all of a sudden I realized, wow, I just blew through this thing. I finished that book. I just knocked it out like I used to. And I was, I remember sitting there going, what, how? And it just hit me, boom, like God has healed you. God has taken everything away, all of that away from you. As you can imagine, if you're somebody that suffers from chronic pain, that was, that was just, I, I don't know. I don't even know how to express it just realizing that life has just in that blink of an eye has changed. All of that stuff was gone. And I knew, I knew a hundred percent. It wasn't like, well, let's see if I, no, I knew, I knew I had been healed. It was, I think the Holy spirit told me you've been healed. You have been healed by Jesus. So I, uh, I of course started telling people that's why I'm making this video, but it happened so fast and it happened believe because God had decided to and because I did retain and remain in the faith that God would heal me. And that is the most important thing I'm trying to impart right now is you have to remain in the faith that God will heal you. Even if you've been praying for years like I had, you still have to remain in that faith that God is more powerful, he has perfect timing for it, and he will do it when it's ready. But his will. A lot of people would have given up. You might have given up at points. You might have said this isn't going to happen or God won't. But he does. He really does. And I just want to tell people he does it. Like, I'm, I'm proof of that. It has been about two months now since this miraculous healing. All of it's gone. All of it is gone from me. I have none of it anymore. I went to that encounter, encounter that I was supposed to go to and I was fine. I was fine. <laughs> I didn't, I took a hike. I went hiking up in the mountains. I would have never been able to do that, but I took a hike. I, I can't express. I just want to tell anybody that's suffering that, wow, like don't, don't think it can't happen. It can happen. You've heard of people having cancer disappear and different things. It does happen. And what I just want to tell everybody is that I believe it's due to faith. I know in the beginning you may have prayed and said, 
I have 100% faith, God heal me, but it wasn't his timing. He will heal you. Just you have to, maybe I was tested. I don't know. Maybe this was a test to see if I, you know, Job had to re retain his faith. And even though I wasn't getting the response I wanted and being healed, I was still maintaining that faith. It wavered. Of course it did. Who wouldn't? But in the end, at the point when I was healed, I had faith 100% that, that Jesus could deliver me from that. That I could, I could be healed. And I was. So that's what I'm telling you. Keep believing. Keep reading scripture. Keep staying in the word. Keep praying. Have others pray for you. I would love to pray for you. If you want, let write a comment below or contact me through my Instagram. I will play, pray for you. I have a list and I will pray for you daily. You can get through this. Please do not give up hope. Please do not think God isn't a powerful God that's still in the healing business because he is. He can heal you in the blink of an eye when you least expect it. So don't ever, ever give up. Keep going. Keep fighting. It's so important to keep fighting. I know it's hard. I know you feel like he's not listening, but he is, and he will. He did for me, and it's amazing, amazing. Praise God. We have a, an amazing God, and he can save you from this. So I wanted to tell you about that. I wanted to let people know, keep in the word, keep praying, keep trying to do things that please God. Work on pleasing God, and he will, once you focus on him, he will take care of the rest, and he did. I can do things I never dreamed about a year ago or even three months ago. And it'll happen for you too, I believe. I firmly believe that he can heal you. It's just stay faithful. Stay faithful to him. And don't lose sight and don't lose faith. Anyways, that's that's my thing. I hope it helps somebody. I hope my story encourages you if you're, if you're dealing with chronic pain. Um, if you'd like to contact me again, you can below. If you would like to help donate, I'm trying to rebuild my life because after this illness, I was out of work for 15 years. I was going to get back to work and my computer died. So I do have a GoFundMe account down below. If you could contribute, I would really appreciate it trying to get a laptop. And also I have a Patreon account. I do these ministry videos now through my YouTube channel. Uh, I had the, the nudging and felt God telling me to do ministry videos and it totally changed what direction I was taking my channel in, but that's good. Like he healed me. I'll listen. Um, so if you could please help me by contributing to my Patreon account, that's below that would set up. Like if you said $2, it would give me $2 a month to continue doing this work. And I'm also hoping to get a computer so I can get back to writing and rebuild my life I'm living with my mom right now because of all that's happened to me. But I'm healed. Hallelujah. There's, there's nothing stopping me except for money right now. <laughs> so, um, please, if this message encouraged you or helped you in any way, please, uh, please help me out, uh, by looking at the links below. That is all. Again, if you need me to pray for you, if you'd like, I will, I will throw down prayers and stay faithful, stay hopeful, remain Remain in the mindset that God can and will take care of this for you. Just follow him and he'll take care of the rest. That's it for this time, guys. Thank you for listening. God bless.